So, what do we have today? What do you got for me? We got a new intro. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we spent some time changing it. Um, I think the new one turned out quite nice. Yeah, I think so too. It's, and the, it's the music's the same, but you know, the the characters are different. Yes. Um, so that intro will be featured on all the videos from now on, except the trailer vault, which has its which has its own intro, uh, which we're also very happy with. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're trying out this new thing where we're uh, talking directly to the camera instead of talking amongst ourselves. Um, see how that works out. Uh, it's a trial for this first video and we'll see how it, how it looks on the edit and then decide what we're gonna, do we have to tweak it or are we gonna go back to the same or are we gonna do this? What else? Mm. I feel old. Yes. That's yes. Probably, um, yes. Yes. My hair doesn't that's look uh, that good anymore. But that's now. not a new thing. No, well, it is. <laughs> it is. I tell you. No, it's not. For for me, for example, the the next few months mm. in terms of going to see films, I haven't really been excited by a lot of the prospects coming out. The, I mean, the end of this year. There's bad times at the El Royale, mm. which is sort of yeah could be interesting, yeah. could be completely contrived and completely shit. Four stars in Empire. So. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're talking about uh, this, um, a movie that was really hyped uh, in advance, uh, apparently in the industry for quite a long time and with, uh, with, the, with the audiences with a very unorthodox kind of trailer. It's rather rare that I read a script and it pops. It was fresh, it was unique, it was full of drama. The more you start scratching at the surface, the more you realize it's got a lot of secrets. Yeah, yeah, it was unpleasant to me. I don't like those things when people are just, I mean, it's... The work should speak for itself. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I, I think that the, I think that as a trailer, it was something new, and I, I it caught my attention, mm. and I understand why the 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 actors wanted to do it that way because the script probably really popped. Mm. Uh, or it could be that they were contractually obligated, like in the press junkets. Yes, it's it, that that is obviously true as well. But I I think that they made that decision because they realized that these guys were being. Um, they were they were believable in their enthusiasm because sometimes in, <laughs> in press junkets you can see that, that they don't really they don't really care about the end product I can but imagine i imagine someone <laughs> telling russell crowe you are not being believable in your enthusiasm so yeah no. they were they were they were yeah. really enthusiastic about it yeah so. but uh, it's unfinished yeah it yes. doesn't, it's, uh, our country doesn't do shit like that. Yeah. We, don't, we don't compliment things that we do. <laughs> it's like adding, <laughs> adding a little bit more corn syrup to the Coca-Cola, basically. Yeah. Like a little bit more selling. Like, yeah. uh, it's really great. And then you, you see the trailer and then somebody comes to tell you that it, it was awesome. But, uh, I mean, it's a new film by Drew Goddard, um, who... Um, who made Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, I, which I really liked. And uh, that is why I had really high hopes for this movie. But yeah. because Cabin in the Woods has a really interesting idea 
and I like I like it a lot when a movie has an interesting idea at the core of it. Isn't right. We should split up. Yeah, a good idea. Really? And I was hoping that this would have the same thing, but yeah. it didn't. I saw Cabin in the Woods fairly late. I didn't see it in the movie theaters, and um, or did I? In any case, sort of the 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 mystery lead had been sort of blown open oh, for shit. me yeah. uh, bef before, um, which I didn't mind that much. I'm not a I'm not a huge. I mean, we've talked about this. I'm not a huge horror movie mm. guy anyway. But obviously, I recognize the tropes, and I sort mm. of like the end slaughter because mm. it's like. You're sort of, sort of um, it's like train spotting. You're just picking out monsters, you know. That's from that movie, and that's <laughs> yeah, from that movie, yeah, and that's yeah. from that movie. And, and it, was a, it was a sort of a fun romp yeah. in a kind of way. I mean, it's, it, like El Royale, it is a popcorn movie. Mm. It is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a horror comedy, which is, which is always sort of, if, if, if you're able to pull it off like Evil mm. Dead style, it's yeah. usually... It, it tends to be quite, quite entertaining. Mm. I mean, Shaun of the Dead is one of my favorite movies, and, and that's a really classic thing about horror comedies. That you, yeah, you I know, think I have yeah. to rewatch it. It's been yeah. such a long time. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Cabin in the Woods for me um, was was enjoyable. I don't think that it was a cinematic masterpiece in itself. I thought that that this seemed interesting because they were saying that this is the latest greatest new thing coming mm. out of hollywood yeah. where the usual gripe now with movies is that that hollywood doesn't come up with anything new mm. that it's just rehashing old ideas it's making remakes mm. it's making sequels it's having shared universes it's having uh just uh, a, a lack of original ideas mm. and and this was i think that you can say that this was original in terms of what movies we've been seeing lately yeah but i don't think that that was necessarily a good thing yeah i mean sure it, i mean i think the problem is in the execution i yep. mean from the beginning of the script and um uh, i mean interesting movie in a way but not not just a just an just an okay movie at yeah. the end of the day yeah yeah, but it, I mean, I've been struggling to f sort of think why, because, I mean, as you can see, I'm doing my bre best John Hamm impersonation with it's my clothes, good. Yeah. Um, and and sort of John Hamm, um, among other uh, other people in the cast, I didn't really have a problem with. I, I thought that I would have liked to see more. I would have liked to see more of John Hamm. All the roles in a movie like that are there to serve the plot. Mm. They're not there to be sort of rounded out individuals. Mm. They're plot devices. Uh, they're sort of props mm. who have secrets. Yeah. So in that sense, it wasn't perhaps a role that, that you, where you can sort of flesh out a character mm. that well. But I think, that, I think that they all did the very best they could. Yeah. And Definitely. they made them sort of interesting. On the other hand, I thought that it was too long, yeah. uh, which is a problem mm. uh, as a combination. And, and, uh, and there was something about that all-surface, no-depth pulp thing that, that, yeah. that, that a lot of imitators of Tarantino have done. Mm. And... Tarantino does that thing so well. He's got he 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 has so much more depth and so much more substance and meat yeah. behind the, the the surface, and you don't re even realize that upon first viewing of a lot of, of of Tarantino's movies. I've come to respect a lot more of some of his movies. Like for example, Inglorious Bastards mm. was in 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 the beginning when I saw it. I didn't think that it was. It was very good, apart from from Hans Landa. Mm. Uh, but then, upon subsequent viewings, upon sort of researching what the influences were mm. and and stuff like that, I, I just there's there's so much more going mm. on there beneath the surface, yeah. um, and you don't have to have that. 
Mm. That's the best thing about Tarantino. You can watch Reservoir Dogs as simply mm. a, a, a run-of-the-mill heist movie with snappy dialogue and a lot of gory, bloody, um, climactic uh, shooting scenes yeah. and stuff like that. And it doesn't take away from anything. Mm. But then when you, have, when you start thinking about the structure and you start thinking about the influences and you start thinking about where the, where the guy's suits came from mm. and, and so on and so on and so on, then it rewards you. Yeah. And I don't think that that happens with El Royale. That there's no. just, you see the surface and the surface looks really nice and pretty mm. and that's it. Yeah. And I think the Tarantino effect is felt yeah. In that sense, that we have gotten used to something that is a better product. I was just reminding, uh, reminiscing, like uh, John Travolta in Pulp Fiction or Samuel L. Jackson or Bruce Willis. All of them, when you look at the movie, you get the sense that they're really in, like entire human beings. Yeah. Completely believable and they have this sort of a sense of depth to them that is... Um, that is really difficult to achieve in a film. Yeah. And this kind of movie really relies on that sensation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Tarantino definitely moved on from this kind of movie like 20 years ago. No. Um, and I think that's probably one of the, one of the problems. Um, but it is weird. I think I, I, I sort of... W El Royale is the kind of movie that I would have really liked when I was a teenager mm. and I sort of want to like it yeah. now because I like the heist movie yeah. for format. I really like it and I don't know why it didn't work. Yeah. I, I mean, there was do so you know, much. <laughs> do you know, this, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you know this meme, this really popular meme about this guy who's working with a girl holding hands yeah. and he's watching, yeah, yeah. Like, here's the El Royale <laughs> and there's Tarantino. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But still, it's it's um, it's sort of it's sort of weird that this is the level that we are supposed to, or that's being touted as, as no, this is. this is the, this is the sort of a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the level of originality yeah. that we're, we're that Hollywood's able to muster yeah. in. Um, but it is not only that, it's, all, it's also to do with just the whole thing being in a lot of ways dated. Mm. Um, and, and a movie that should have been made, like, yeah, made probably a couple of decades ago. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if you, if you think about it as a sort of a Sunday evening popcorn movie, a bit hungover and so on, I don't mm. think you're going to have... I, I think that it's, it's probably going to fare moderately well yeah, probably. as video on demand or, or, or on, on the streaming services. Mm. You watch me? I only watch who they tell me to watch. Who's they? Management. Baby, it's my Would you mind opening up the door? No, I ain't going to do that. Because it's still an interesting movie, but it's just not the movie that they sort of promised. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but it, it, it is really, it's, it, it is really a sort of, invites to sort of find flaws mm. within it. Yeah, I think um, the problem is that you, you, under, you immediately, uh, or after the movie, you understand that this was not a good, a perfect ex experience or a really good experience, and then you have to you try to understand why. But yeah. it's actually really difficult. You're right about that. It's hard to find the flaws in the movie. Yeah, I want to I, I want to draw one more parallel, at least um, uh, from the movie Identity mm. by James Mangold, uh, which was a sort of a quirky thing when it came out. It wasn't. Uh, I I don't remember it being. Uh, sort of massively advertised no. and it was like uh, I don't think that it was small uh, it was a small movie exactly it had a lot of it had an ensemble cast like yeah. this one but I uh, identity was the first movie that really came to mind even when I saw I think even when I saw the trailer I thought I sort of thought about identity and with identity it was it was by no means it was a, it, it wasn't a perfect movie 
in any sense of the word. Uh, but it had a more interesting core idea, mm. uh, which sort of took it a, maybe a level deeper than this yeah. one. Um, because that's no. also a movie that has a lot of surface, I think. Mm. That there's, that's true. That there is stuff going on, obviously, behind the surface, but there's not really much stuff going on be beyond the movie screen. But it, it was more satisfying. Yeah, it was. Even though I don't think that it was as well written, in a way. No. I mean, I, the dialogue wasn't as well written. Mm. But there was something more satisfying about it, um, sort of the end result. Yeah, it, it is basically the end result and the, sort of the interesting idea that it's always nice when you see something to have this sort of a magic trick habit, that what you saw was not actually what you saw, but it was this whole different thing that was going on all the time. And mm -hmm. that adds a lot of value to the movie, in my opinion. If it, if it just ended like a, as a normal noir movie would, I mean, I think it would be completely forgettable as a yeah. movie. I, I used to really like, like we were talking about uh, M. Night Shyamalan mm. uh, and his obsession with the final twist and how he sort of makes movies that you only want to really see once mm. or ha don't have a lot of rewatch mm. uh, value yeah. uh, within them. And I, I, I sort of liked those movies like 20 mm. years ago. I really liked those movies a mm. lot. But there are quite a few movies that, I've, that I don't want to see the twist anymore, mm. in a way. Mm. If it's done really well, I mean, I really still really like The Usual Suspects. I mm. think it's one of the best movies yeah. I've ever seen. And it is also a movie which has that final twist, which really sp sort of spoils subsequent viewings. Yeah. But, but like, and that, I think, happened with Identity. And mm. I think that this happened with El Royale as well, in a way. Mm you don't really want to see how it unfolds again. But there's less value yeah. in El Royale. As a, even uh, without the twist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's true, for really? some reason. And yeah, yeah, I really don't know why El Royale wasn't better yeah. as a viewing experience, because it has all the elements that may, would or should make an interesting movie, but it just doesn't, somehow it doesn't work. Yeah. The films are like, um, to me, they're like a, a, a well-written um, cartoon, in yeah. a way, or or because cartoons, like we've talked about this before, that cartoons are sort of essentially pulpy. Mm. They're, they're meant to be pulpy, mm. and even the best, apart from the really really f rare ones, even the best sort of Marvel stories or DC stories tend yeah. to be. You can't really compare them to great literature no. because they're not meant to go mm. that deep into the, the one of no. the one of the things that's sort of is the thing that you you're drawn to is that they're not taking themselves that mm. seriously or the world automatically because it's mm. drawn and it's the, the, everything's ex exaggerated and so on. It doesn't it doesn't take that seriously. And I think that with, uh, with El Royale, I had that same kind of no. feeling that this is this could be a really this could be a really cool comic book yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But as a film, which I'm supposed to sort of take seriously, mm. even though it's a pro popcorn movie, yeah, I, I guess I have too high standards now. Yeah, but it's, it's good because um, I, would, I just watched Daredevil season three on Netflix. Don't spoil it for me. I won't, but fucker. the main idea was that it's like something like 12 or 10 episodes. And when I was watching it, I was just thinking about rather constantly what a waste of time this really is. <laughs> <laughs> and the point is exactly that because it's like 10 hours or 30 hours just about Daredevil is a lot of time yeah. and the character can't it's, sustain it. Yeah. It just can't. And when I watch something like Billions or something that is a really good drama series, it's then you see that okay this can actually sustain itself for a really long long, long period of time yeah. but with something like daredevil i mean it sort of spoils it, it gets in the territory of spoiling the character in a way yeah because you just see it through it and it's there's nothing there it's yeah. emptiness <laughs> like our life <laughs>